Ghana has been receiving so much financial support recently. In today's media briefing on the economy, I'll provide updates on the following key areas. The performance of the economy to date, progress made on the implementation of the IMF-supported PCPEC, status of Ghana's debt restructuring program, and the status of independent power producers' legacy debt, as well as the power purchase agreement renegotiations, among others. Let me summarize some of the remarkable achievements we've witnessed in recent times. Generally, the macroeconomic environment continues to remain stable as government continues to implement the IMF-supported program. Growth, as we've heard from the previous two distinguished speakers, is proving to be more resilient and robust than initially programmed. And the economy continues to show strong signs of recovery, particularly in quarter one of 2024. The results was remarkable. Overall real GDP growth for quarter one 2024 was 4.7%, the highest since quarter one of 2022. This growth performance is better than the 3.1% growth recorded in the same period in 2023. Industry grew the most at 6.8%, followed by agriculture at 4.1% and services at 3.3%. The 2024 quarter one GDP growth rate is the highest since quarter four of 2020. The growth in industry is particularly interesting. In the past, growth came largely from services and to some extent agriculture. Industry did not perform well. And so if we are beginning to see industry performing well, it tells us that the real recovery is here. Manufacturing is going to grow continuously and that will mean more jobs being created for the Ghanaian people, more wealth being created for the Ghanaian people. And therefore, we have turned the corner as we have said over and over. The future is brighter. Inflation, as we've also heard from the governor of the Bank of Ghana, is declining with a strong disinflation process since the beginning of 2023. In response to the ongoing fiscal consolidation, appropriate tightening of monetary policy and relative stability in the exchange rate. Headline inflation declined by 1.9 percentage points to 23.1 percent in May 2024 from 25.0 percent in April 2024 after peaking at 54.1 percent in December 2022. But the country is still struggling with the ongoing economic challenges and the cost of living is set to rise again. Starting today, Ghanaians will face increased costs for essential commodities and utilities, and that is going to affect households, businesses, and industries across the nation. Ghana's Public Utility Regulatory Commission, or PURC, has announced a series of tariff hikes for water and electricity in their second quarter review. To them, these increases are necessary because the government need money to cover operation costs, meet financial obligations, and maintain infrastructure. And here are the breakdowns, and we are starting with electricity. For lifeline consumers using 30 kilowatts per hour, we see a 3.45 increment. Residential consumers using more than 30 kilowatt per hour and non-residential users will see a 5.84% increment. Industrial consumers will also witness a 4.92% increment. With water tariffs, all consumers categories will see a 5.16% increment. For households and businesses, these increases mean higher utility bills, starting from July 1st through September 2024. Let's break it down again what this means for the average Ghanaian. Let's take a typical Ghanaian household consuming 100 kilowatt hour of electricity per month. 
Before the hike, they paid approximately 180 Ghana cities. With the new tariffs, their bill will rise to about 190 Ghana cities. For water, a household consuming 10 cubic meters per month will see their bills increase from 70 Ghana cities to 74 Ghana cities. While these increases may seem small individually, they add up to everything in the country, especially for low-income families who are already struggling with high cost of living. The construction sector is also feeling the pinch. Cement prices have been on the rise, with a bag of cement going from 95 Ghana cities in May to over 108 Ghana cities in July, depending on the brand and location. Cement market leaders in Ghana like Gassim, Jata Cement and Diamond Cement attribute this to increased transportation, electricity and raw material costs. The government is pushing for regulations to cap the unreasonable pricing of cement, but this has been met with resistance from manufacturers who claim there hasn't been enough consultation. Now away from that, five cement manufacturers boycotted a scheduled meeting with Trade and Industry Minister Katie Hammond on Monday to discuss a proposed legislative instrument aimed at regulating cement prices. The companies, Dangote, Supersem, Gassem, Diamond Cement and Simov, declined the meeting, expressing a preference for closed-door discussions. This development occurred amidst strong opposition from manufacturers against the proposed legislation to control cement prices. I'm clear in my mind. I've done enough consultation. I'm clear in my mind. I've given them enough opportunity to put on the table what the ideas are for us to sanitize the system. It seems to be that it is their way or no other way. I think um, your expression is their way or the highway. I don't intend to accept any, um, any, any such um, attitude. So um, here we are. Um, God willing, tomorrow I will make the effort officially to lay my ally. And this ally is seeking to regulate the pricing of cement in the country. I think it is atrocious to have a situation where uh, every blessed minute there is increase in the prices of cement. Fuel prices are also set to rise. The first pricing window for July will see fuel prices increase by 2%, with diesel and liquefied petroleum gas LPG following suit. Goyo is currently selling petrol at 14 CD 60 pesos per liter and diesel at 14 CD 75 pesos per liter. These hikes are largely due to the CD decline against the US dollar and firming oil prices on the international market. To put this in perspective, let's compare these increases to other countries. In neighboring Nigeria, petrol prices recently surged by 30% following subsidy removers causing widespread protests in the country. In Kenya, electricity prices rose by 5% earlier this year due to similar economic pressures. While Ghana's increases are relatively moderate, they still pose significant challenges for many Ghanaians who are already dealing with high cost of living. So, in order not to see a repeat of Kenya's protests in Ghana, the government should be mindful of these tariff hikes because these price hikes are surely going to affect the average Ghanaian's quality of life. And that is all for today's video. So subscribe to stay informed and stay prepared. This is AS1 News, bringing you the latest business updates and stories that matters to you. My name is Sheriff Haruna. Have a joyful life and see you in the next one. Makrao.